Uh, we're glad to know you're still there. Uh, right now, President Bola Tinubu confirmed Nigeria we hailed thee as the country's latest national anthem when he joined a joint seating of the National Assembly to mark the Silver Jubilee of Nigeria's Fourth Republic. Um, our guest to talk about this reintroduction of uh, the anthem which was uh, there from the inception of from, from independence and was later jettisoned in 1978 uh, in favor of the Arizo compatriot, a different national anthem composed by a Nigerian who eventually was in uh, the U.S. anyway, um, is uh, Mr. Bolahan Olojede, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Olojede. Good morning. Nice to be on the program. Um, do you need to learn the, the, the old new national anthem, <laughs> or you already know Not it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just loving it, just calling it old new. Old new, new yes, old. because it was old, now it is new. So do you need to learn it? Let's just start there. Or you know it already. Um, interestingly, I sang that uh, anthem mm -hmm. in my primary school, both the Yoruba and English versions. Oh, wow. So you're, you're just going back. Back to back in time, yes. <laughs> Reminiscing. Back back in time. Time. Not, uh, yes. I don't have to relearn it, I, I know it's already. I can still sing even the Yoruba version, as I said. Okay, you maybe know, there but, will be time for that. But, yeah. but now, generally, um, there have been uh, divergent um, opinions about the returning to or the return to the old national anthem. We've seen uh, figures like Obi Ezekwesili saying that she will never sing it, we've seen people like Reno Omokeri saying that it was uh, very unnecessary, they are against it. And so many other notable people have said that it was very, very unnecessary. But what do you think about it? It seems to have a sentimental value to the people who advocated that it comes back. And the people who feel or felt that it shouldn't have come back also have sentimental value attached to the one that is being jettisoned now in favor of the old anthem. Where do you stand? Um, I, I think it, it looks to me like one of those um, uh, distractions to calm the populace down. Uh, it had an effect among uh, a, a segment of the society. Uh, people who connected with it probably because um, they, were, they were old enough to know when the song was around and they associated with it. So it, they had an emotional connection with it. I also have a bit of that because I sang that anthem. I did but I'm too. also not unaware that some of the words that were used in that anthem were derogatory colonial words. Um, although these words might have now been absorbed into common usage, but it doesn't it doesn't remove their tainted past. When, uh, when, when an Oyibo man calls you a tribe or native, you can check how the people an Australian call native Australian, or the people Americans call native American or native, native Alaskan, or the people, you know, the Canadian call the native Canadians or the tribe in Canada. You will easily see the derogatory edge to the use of those two words, native and tribe. And it is also not surprising that they featured in that anthem because the anthem was composed by an Oyibo person. So if we look at the season when that anthem was composed and the use of those words in those seasons, um, we might probably not be giving life to an anthem such as the old anthem, especially because of those derogatory uh, words. I mean, that is apart from the fact that I think can actually wonder whether uh, the words are the issues of the table right now uh, and whether that is enough to inspire, but whether, whether change of anthem is enough to inspire uh, a hungry man and, and all their problems. Uh, table. But even in the context of the drafting of that anthem in itself, those two words are derogated, they are tainted in their use in the season in which that anthem was composed. And the fact that they have become of general usage today does not take away that taint, in my personality. Okay. Uh, well, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, these words are the same words. 
if you talk about the history of it, well, in the context it was used at that time, I, d I wouldn't know. I was just singing it as well. I was around anyway mm. when it came. So I okay. was already <laughs> around. Mm. So now, if you say in the context uh, it was composed at that time, it was derogatory. But these are words that we have seen in our polity right now being used. Tribal. Tribal sentiments. We've, we've been talking about tribal sentiments, what the politicians are now using to divide us and all that, ethnicity, religion, mm -hmm. and all that. And we've been talking about being oppressed. These are some of the words that are in that anthem. Do you think um, these words have still not ev evolved in such a way that we shouldn't think more about uh, what it used to be and concentrate on what it is now? As, as it is today, Despite the, the fact that it has been absorbed into common use, a Caucasian, European, or American will never call a fellow Caucasian tribe or native. They will never use it on themselves. Never. So, and when you call up those usage that I, I spoke about, if you say native Australian an image, just do a Google, or native Canadian image, Native American image, Native Alaskan image. When the images pop up, you will understand the derogatory edge to the use of those words. Like I said, they might have been absorbed into common usage today, but they do, that that does not take away the taint of those of those of those words. I don't think we should be giving those words life in our anthem. Excuse me. Mm. <clears throat> Okay, I, don't, so, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah, so... I, I well, here we are, though. We already have a signing to law. It's not fair, so. mm. wow. Okay, so, um, so I know that the old one was um, being composed by Will Lillian John Williams, you know, who's a Caucasian. And then we now have changed it to um, Arise the Compatriots, which is composed by Pao Diese, um, Benedict Odiese, who was, you know, in the Nigerian force. Now, moving back, because there's always that thing of colonialism that, you know, why are we going back in time to something that was being composed, not even, was composed for us, but not by us. The reason why some people are even sentimental with this is because it's something that was composed by a fellow Nigerian, for Nigerian. So why are we going back to our slave masters and what they composed for us? It's, 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 I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I think maybe um, we were just trying to, the, the government was trying to look for something that could, you know, connect to a segment of the society in terms of emotion. And to be honest with you, people, a lot of people who sang, who were who are, who are part of that uh, anthem, um, actually got emotionally connected. And maybe it make them have some no nostalgia, nostalgia and they yeah. felt a bit uh, you know happier yesterday when this when they it was passed into law so it's it achieved that purpose but the, in the larger context i would rather take an anthem composed by a nigerian than that composed by a colonialist then if i think there's a need for review of the anthem we, we, we were told we're a country of 200 million people. We can get brand new or revised anthem rather than go back to a 1960 anthem provided by the colonial. The words that were exciting us, though tribe and tongue were differ. Um, but yes, uh, but like uh, I think um, you know, someone mentioned tribal sentiment. You're never going to hear that word. It, 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 it used in Europe, except they are referring to an old ancient set of people who used to live somewhere. That is the context in which the Caucasian will try. But they don't have what we have in Nigeria. They will never say tribal sentiments because they don't, they don't have, have it. Nobody kind of goes to election and says that this is our turn. Nobody says it should go to the north, it should go to the yeah. south. Or anything. They don't have those kind of sentiments, so the words will not arise. Is that not fair that in a country where those words and those actions arise, if you use those words, it will sit with the people, it will resonate with the people more? So why should the people now accept that? That in, 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 in your country, we know that you guys are tribes and this is how you behave. 
And then we take that notion and, and formalize it in an anthem to be singing it on, on daily basis and on page. It, it, it doesn't... Anyway, it is a law. I what you say, yeah. because it's almost like you're, you're putting it in there in the face, like reminding yeah, everyone yeah. yes, that we're not the same. Meanwhile, you know, in the, in the new anthem or the current anthem before the old one now becomes the new one, you know, <laughs> it says, arise your compatriots, Nigerians. It makes them understand that, you know, it's not about your tribe. It's not about what you speak. It's not about your, you know, political inclination. It's not about your religion. It is you being a Nigerian. So I understand that. And I think that, you know, this whole thing, it, it, it's funny to me in the sense that, you know, it's just some, some smoke screen thing to spark up social conversations. Because now the conversation is going from, oh, you know, as I sang this when I was much younger, the same way I'm going to yeah, say it now. Yeah, you know, I to did. people saying it in my own generation, I sang Arise the Compatriots, and I think I'm okay with that. Or I'm not okay with this kind of, this kind of words. Like you are saying right now, I'm not okay with this, this kind of words in here. I'd rather have this, this other words here so it's just making everybody because right now there's there's a divergence with everybody everybody is one person wants one thing or another which now leads to my question is this what we are supposed to be talking about right now in nigeria knowing fully well that there's so many things we're going through as a nation uh, as a nation our economy is dwindling so are we supposed to be talking about reverting from one national anthem to the other or we're supposed to be talking about how to grow our economy in a more sustainable way. Maybe just this is just a trigger. No, but, but because for, for me, I, I find it weird that there's so many things to do, so many infrastructures to put in place, so many policies, healthcare, education, so many things that you can decide to look into. Are we supposed to be looking at an, a national anthem? And what, what difference is that going to make? Even if we sing Arise the Compatriots or we sing Nigeria, we hail thee, is there going to be any difference in, you know, the Nigeria that we see today? Are the politicians going to say, yes, because um, we're singing this old anthem, that means um, we're going to, you know, develop the country. That means there will be no corruption calm down. anymore. That calm means, down. no, I'm, I'm asking my question. Just let him answer. Just calm so down. Those are my questions. <laughs> is anything going to change? Uh, well, as long as it is just about the words, um, it, it will not make any difference. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't know the words anyway. The actions are more important to inspire. Actions of leaders, actions of government and leadership at all levels. There are leadership of us actually at several levels. Those actions, they speak much better, much stronger. They convey messages much stronger than the words of an anthem. That right there is the reality. Exactly. But it doesn't take away the fact that government probably achieves, you know, some connection with a segment of the society by virtue of what it did with that national anthem. So if we fix the country first, we can inspire people into further heights or onto further heights with our anthem. But as it is right now, I'm not so sure how much we can inspire a hungry man with the change. Okay. Um, are you up for... It's a, it's a simple question. Don't laugh, Bruma. Are you up for canonization of the anthem? I mean, what is happening in Kanu is, <laughs> is that there was a law that now um, multiplied the Emirates, and then now it has been reverted or reversed. Uh, we have the Sanusi now, and then there are uh, very divergent judgments and, that are going on. Uh, will you be up for this law, maybe in the future, being reverted yet again, uh, that we go back to the, uh, I don't know whether I would call it the new anthem, the, the Arise of Compatriots? Yeah. Of course, it could be reverted, uh, but to me, it is not as important as actually getting into the space of doing mm. and begin to impact the people. So when we talk about tribe and tongue differ in brotherhood, we stand. Let us see it in action. Mm. It is in the space of action that people get the message more strongly 
than in the words. If you're saying it in the words, but the action um, is totally different, it doesn't make sense. They will not argue it with you. They just don't believe what you're thinking. And them, as simple as that. Mm. So, um, whether you revert it or not, it doesn't matter. I would rather want to see action, this, this, the, this words being put into action. And the action is, is what will give life, is what will inspire people to embrace the anthem. Whether this one, uh, the, the old new one, or another one that is to come. Mm. <laughs> okay, my, my question now is, um, I am hoping that this is just a trigger to greater things, better things, reforms that we are looking for in our country. But if these reforms have to come with the words uh, of this anthem guiding us, where do you think we need to start from and where do we need to go to? What are some of these things that you think the government and whoever is, in, uh, is a stakeholder, whoever is in, in, in charge of this, what are some of the things that you, need, you think should be addressed so that we can achieve what the words of this anthem are telling us? Okay. Um, I, I believe we need to go back to issues of taking power, devolving power right down um, to the government that is closer to the people. Uh, which is a local government. So, uh, in the place, in that place, we will start to recognize the fact that there is nothing wrong with our differences, and that we can recognize those differences for what they are, and build our societies from uh, the, the, the various components as they were, or as they are today rather than a government that is highly centralized and um, someone who's sitting in Asoro is also made to have responsibility for the primary health care center in my village. Um, so issues of devolving power, I would like to see more of that. Recognizing governments, various governments, acting out the issue of though tribes and tongue may differ in brotherhood we stand. You create a state today, and people who have been in the same state before are saying, oh, you are no longer in my state, therefore you are fired from work. Go back to where you came from. Or, or your, your husband, you are married to a husband from another state, therefore you cannot get the promotion to be chief judge of this, of this state. So all those things are things that require that we act, we start to act them out, especially at the level of leadership. When people see what leadership is doing, it has a way of influencing how they are like. Okay. Well, we, we do hope that it will get to that point. Um, Nigeria cannot uh, survive and flourish uh, if we are, we are not looking at ourselves as brothers and sisters. Okay. But um, the, the present government might argue... By the way, why is he only brothers and not sisters in the answer? Is he, is he, is he don't start that, Mr. Oloje. Don't start that conversation now. Please. I, don't start it. Don't even start it. <laughs> okay, now, but the, the government will argue that what you just said is something that already started. In fact, there is a matter in court right now where the 36 uh, gov um, governors or the 36 states have been taken to court to allow the local government to breathe. Like, let them survive, let them uh, function Capital as economy. the third tier, tier of government. So maybe they are working in the right direction. Uh, can you give them that at least? Maybe, maybe. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer. And the fact that it's already in court, I'm careful what I can say. It looks to me like it's a constitutional matter. Yeah. Um, it was part of what the constitutional uh, committee, the last one we had, what they deliberated on. Mm -hmm. and that matter was sent to the states for ratification as required in a constitutional amendment. The states did not ratify that. Um, I, I don't know how we're going to get past it, but it might, it might have to get back to uh, the National Assembly. But we all await what the court we have to say about this, this matter. But is this the right way to go? I have absolutely no doubt that the man in Asurov cannot be the one to pay close attention to whether I have drugs in the primary health care center that is near me. It will not happen. Even the level of accountability we are seeing now. For example, in the midst of all this um, situation that we have found ourselves, it is important to mention that much more money 
accrued to the states and the local government since the removal of fuel subsidy. So what that removal of fuel subsidy did was to, to, to take money from the people, give it to the government, and expect that the government will use it for the people. I am not so sure that the government at the state and at the local government level use the additional income, the fact that they made much more money to the benefit of the people in those jurisdictions. Well, well, I know that for the local government, because they do not have this autonomy, they can't even put that development in place. Mm. But hopefully, do you think maybe the constitution needs to be amended? And if it is amended, obviously, the local government you know, areas, they can have full autonomy and function in their right capacity. Well, it is still under the same constitution that we've had stronger local governments in the past. They grew weaker over the years, and I don't know what would have been responsible for that. In the days when the Lagos Island local government would be raised in the municipal bond, some states in Nigeria don't even know what a bond smells like. That was the, the, the quality of local government uh, uh, governance in those years. So whatever we need to do to get back to it, I believe it will help us a great deal. It looks to me, like I said, like a constitutional issue uh, maybe at the end of the day, the court case now uh, will lead us back in that direction to say, look, this is a constitutional issue. Let's get it back to the various state houses of assembly to ratify that part of the amendment that was already done. You know, the, 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 that National uh, Committee on Constitution did include local government autonomy in what they did. But it, there, there, there was no ratification from the state. My fear is that this local government might get this autonomy, but they will still be uh, in the pockets of the state governors. And this is why. Um, now, it's almost like it is the state governor that picks his boys and puts in every local mm -hmm. government, and they do his bidding. So no matter what amount is voted for them, it may still remain that way. Will you support INEC, for instance, who is a, that is a uh, saying that the state electoral bodies are not doing a good job and everything should be taken to the national, the INEC, uh, for, uh, to conduct local government elections and uh, everything regarding uh, local government elections. Do you think this will bring the required reform that we need in the local government system? I, I think it is worth testing that model. Uh, it is obvious that the, the state... Uh, INEC conducting uh, local government elections has been a sham, a grand failure. It's not an election, it's a selection. The party uh, that is ruling at the state will just automatically win all the seats in the, lo in the local government. It is not working, obviously. So if it is not working, uh, it might not be a bad idea to try um, the, the INEC version. Let it be conducted from the center. However, it, it gives me some worries, though, uh, because what we are saying is that we are taking things that should be at that level back to the center. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we will do is, as the thing stabilizes, we still need to take it back to the state. See, when you even look at the quality of some of the uh, local government chairmen, you're wondering whether there are people that are, you can entrust with the kind of money that are meant to come to the local government. So th this, these are some of the issues. Mr. Lodeje, are you still there? I'm here. Hello? OK. Yeah, so I mean, I was circling back to you know this national anthem, right? You For you, what's your opinion? New, old, that's the old, new, <laughs> new, old, or a different one you know, in total, what do you think we're supposed to be doing right now based on the anthem for you? Because, I mean, you've, you've sang both of them. You sang the Nigeria We Hail Thee. You also sang the All Arise right. of Compatriots. But if you were to choose one right now, I know you have your own sentiments, especially when it comes <laughs> to the tribes and songs uh, in, in, the, in the old one. But if we were to take that out and you were just to say, okay, this is an anthem I would really like to sing, which of them would you want? Or would you want a, an, an entire new one um, in totality of it all? I will, I, will, I will want a new one or a modified Arizo compatriot. Um, if we feel there are certain missing things, 
that that Arizo compatriot is not speaking to the fact that we believe in our diversity and that it is a plus for us. Then we can infuse uh, a, a statement or statement or clauses or sentences that speaks to that or that speak to that in, in, in a modified anthem. But going back to native and tribe and brotherhood in 2024 um, doesn't cut it. So for me, that old anthem is, 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 is the least favored. If anything at all, I will take a rise of compatriot. But if I have my way, I will infuse whatever is the attraction in that old anthem into a rise of compatriot, and we have a brand new one. Okay. Let's walk the talk like this uh, government is claiming to do. They're walking the talk. Now there is so much talk in that uh, anthem. We do hope that we are going to uh, walk that talk and be a Nigeria that doesn't look at ethnicity, that doesn't look at um, our Pride different... And yeah, well, don't use it when <laughs> he's still here. <laughs> okay, but we, a Nigeria that seeks only of unity and development for ourselves. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Olojede, for coming on the show this morning. It's been a pleasure, as always. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. We've been talking to Mr. Bolahan Olojede, a public affairs analyst. Uh, he joined us here from Lagos here. And uh, we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our second hot topic. Don't go away. <laughs>